Hey everybody, it's uh, Nacre VMX, and it's been quite a while since I've uh, done a Photoshop tutorial. I did three of them, and then I just kind of stopped doing it because I really only wanted to do tutorials that I felt weren't out there like a million times, like, uh, you know, information that's either hard to come by or whatever. So I got a comment on one of my Photoshop tutorial videos from uh, Global Gaming Society said awesome tutorial but I wanted it seamless that was on the sand dunes one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a way to take any texture and make it a seamless texture now um, if you don't know what I mean by a seamless texture uh, let me demonstrate um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up one of the textures that I have in here let's see uh, actually let me go over here give me a second here this is a little spontaneity uh, spontaneity here Okay, um, hold on, I know how to. Okay, here's a wood texture that I have. Now, um, let's say I was to, you know, let me crop it out actually, and just to get a, a smaller piece of it. Okay, so here's a wood texture. Let me just blow that up. And uh, basically, let's say I wanted to use this as a fill texture. Now, to do that, what you would do is you would um, have your texture. It could be anything. And what you do is you hit Edit, and then you hit Define Pattern, and then give it a name like Wood. Okay, and there you go. And then what you're going to do is you can create a new... I'm going to create a new one, we'll say 500 by 500, so it's bigger, and there it is. And uh, if you go to Edit, and then Fill, and it'll say, uh, under Use, you want to make sure you have Pattern selected, and under Custom Pattern, you click the arrow, and it's usually going to be like the last thing on there. You select your thing, and you hit OK, and it's going to fill it up. The problem is that there's these unsightly scenes. So I'm going to show you how to take any texture and make it seamless. Um, it works with some textures better than it does with others. This is a pretty good one right here. So what you're going to do is you open up your texture and um, before you do define texture, what you're going to do is you're going to go to filter and go to other. You don't use these other ones that often, but there you have it. And you're going to go to offset. Now uh, make sure that you have preview clicked. It's very important. And also make sure that you have wrap around clicked. And what you're going to do is you're going to drag this about halfway and then look for the seam and you're going to drag it around until the seam is in the middle. See the seam is right there. So I get the seam in the middle. That's the horizontal seam. And then you're going to do the same for the vertical seam. And you're going to get it to where the seam looks like it's making a cross. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to zoom in quite a bit and you can zoom in by pressing Control and Plus on your keyboard. That's actually enough or you could do it through view and uh, zoom in and out controls are right there now the um, the tool we're going to be using for this is called the clone stamp tool and that's found right here um, the keyboard shortcut is S but that's also the keyboard shortcut for the pattern stamp tool so if it goes to the pattern stamp tool you just have to right click here and hit clone stamp tool and then we're gonna select the brush now, um, you want to make it kind of on the small side, but it depends. Uh, there's no magic number because it depends on the size of your document. So you want it to be kind of like that. I have it at 10 pixels right there. You want it to be nice and small so you can get a lot of detail, and you want the hardness to be zero. Because if it's too precise, then you're really not erasing the seams at all. You're just kind of smudging them. Now, if yeah, this is what's going to happen. If you try to click with it, you're going to get this message. It says, could not use the clone stamp because the area to clone has not been defined. Alt click to define a source point. So you're going to hold Alt on your keyboard, and it's going to change the icon from a circle to a bullseye, and then click close to the seam, and then click on the seam and drag down a little bit. And then do the same. But you got to keep moving down. You want to basically clone an area next to the seam by alt clicking and then you remove the seam like that and you just keep doing this down like this alt click click alt click click drag alt click click drag alt click click drag now when you get towards the point where it's um 
it meets the other seam. You want to go to the bottom and start from there again. So just, uh, there really isn't much of a seam left down here, actually. So, OK. And now we're going to do the same thing horizontally. Now this is going to be a little messier because of the wood grain is kind of going in different directions. But trust me on this. This is not the best example of a um, texture to use. But if you're getting a kind of thing where it looks warped or in one point, which I'm getting here, I'll show you how to deal with that. So just keep going through the whole thing. And uh, you want to make sure your brush is not too big. Otherwise, you might start to create a seam, which you don't want to do. OK. Now, um, the, the vertical one looks really good. Oh. Yeah, the vertical one looks really good. But um, the horizontal one leaves something to be desired. Like I said, this doesn't lend itself to everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the brush size here. And I'm going to decrease the opacity to about 75%. I'm going to kind of go through the whole thing like that. And now you can see it looks 10 times better. So now what you want to do is you want to go to Filter, and then Other, and then Offset. And your settings should be exactly the same as they were before. And that's exactly what you're going to need to put it exactly back where it was. So click that. Now, when I hit Edit, and I go to Define Pattern, and I'm going to put Wood Seamless. I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to come over here just to show you a before and after. Let me create a new layer by clicking on the New Layer icon. Or you could do Control plus N to do a new layer. Or you can go to Layer, New, and then Layer. And I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to go to Edit. And I'm going to go to Fill. You could do Shift and F5 to bring up the same dialog. And uh, Use Pattern, Custom Pattern. I'm going to select my seamless wood pattern. Leave all this the same way and just hit OK. And you can see it's um, a lot better. It's not perfect because, like I said, the wood grain you know, is going in different directions. But it's a lot better. So like I said, this is before and this is after. So as you can see, it's, it's a huge, huge difference. So pretty much um, you can go ahead and create your own seamless patterns by drawing something and then using that technique to make it seamless and then defining the pattern and saving it and then you can you know share them with other people if you wanted to so that's how you um create a it turn i'm sorry not how to create a pattern but how to make any image into a seamless pattern it's a actually pretty useful tutorial so um yeah i said this was going to be a short one because it's really easy Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you found it informative. And if I come up with any other ideas for Photoshop tutorials, I'll do that. See you next time.